Hi there, everyone. Alicia and I spent three weeks in Europe with the first part of our journey starting in the wonderful region of Normandy. This was an amazing yet busy four days of traveling, taking in the beautiful countryside of Normandy, along with visiting several of the D-Day sites. As Canadians, we knew we wanted to make sure we visited La Maison des Canadiens on Juno Beach and were provided with an incredible experience of stepping inside the house, which was the first home liberated on French soil during the D-Day landings. We also paid a visit to the Canadian War Cemetery located just south of Juno Beach in Beni sur Mer, and we both agreed that while we were in France, we needed to make the drive to see another Canadian monument, that being Vimy Ridge. We stayed in the seaside town of Calberg during our Normandy stay and the drive to Vimy Ridge was just under four hours. The Battle of Vimy Ridge, which took place in World War I, has been considered a defining moment for Canada, where Canadian troops earned a reputation as fierce and effective soldiers because of the stunning success that took place here. As successful as the Battle of Vimy Ridge was for the Canadians in helping liberate the French from the German forces, it came at a heavy cost with more than 10,000 soldiers either killed or wounded. Four Canadian divisions stormed the ridge at 5.30 a.m. on the 9th of April, 1917. More than 15,000 Canadian infantry overran the Germans all along the front. Hill 145, the highest and the most important feature of the ridge and where the Vimy Monument now stands, was captured in a frontal bayonet charge against machine gun positions. The Battle of Vimy came to an end after three costly days. The capture of Vimy was more than just an important battlefield victory as the four Canadian divisions who stormed the ridge together were men from all regions of Canada and had fought together for the first time. It is the words of Brigadier General A.E. Ross who after the war described the heroics of the Canadian troops at Vimy Ridge, in those few minutes I witnessed the birth of a nation. Vimy Ridge has now been considered a symbol of sacrifice and in 1922 the French government granted the land of Vimy Ridge to Canada. It is here the beautiful, elegant and gleaming white marble monument stands as an emotional reminder of the 11,285 Canadian soldiers killed in France or who have no known graves. Vimy Ridge was simply a spectacular sight to see and the monument that stands on these very sacred grounds will leave you in awe of its beauty. I was literally speechless stepping onto this masterpiece and reading the names that are forever engraved really drove home the sheer number of Canadian soldiers who died during the First World War. Once we viewed the monument, we made the short drive to the visitor center. Here, visitors are able to wander through the section of preserved trenches. The portion of the former battlefield is 250 acres and is preserved as part of the memorial park that surrounds the monument. As you can see, the grounds still show the scars remaining from the heavy artillery and underground detonations that took place. Most of the site is closed off for public safety. However, walking through the trenches and seeing the craters in the fields will leave you with a lasting impression of just how deadly the battle for Vimy Ridge was. We really enjoyed our visit to Vimy Ridge and I strongly encourage anyone to make the journey and visit and learn about this incredible piece of Canadian history. Now once we left Vimy Ridge, we decided to stay in the neighboring city of Arras. Arras is located just 12 kilometers from Vimy Ridge, and indeed, the battle for Vimy Ridge on April 9, 1917, was part of the larger Battle of Arras. We were here for one evening, so we didn't have much time to see the sites that exist here, but we did learn that Arras was also a significant part of Canadian history, as it was the Canadian troops that liberated Arras from German forces. The fighting here was fierce and the city was eventually liberated, but it came at a cost of over 11,000 Canadian casualties. Famous for its Baroque style squares, the Town Hall and the Belfry, Arras has a wealth of heritage, architecture and history. Much of the city was destroyed during the battles of the First World War and it was rebuilt and reconstructed to its former glory, that of a city with a Flemish feel. One of the biggest draws to Eris is the underground tunnels that exist throughout the city. We missed these, but managed to visit Eglise Saint-Jean-Baptiste, 
as well as taking the beauty of the belfry, which stands in Place de Aero. When we entered Place de Aero, we were blown away at the size of it, but also its beauty. It was amazing to walk in here and see the beautiful buildings and all the people that simply seemed to appear out of nowhere. The belfry, originally completed in 1554, was completely destroyed during German bombardments in 1917, yet meticulously reconstructed and became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005. The city of Arras has always shown their appreciation to Canadians, and one of the lighter tributes we stumbled on was a poutine eatery that was as Canadian as it gets, displaying artifacts of our national pastime, hockey. We enjoyed our evening in Arras, and although we were unable to see and learn more about the city on this trip, it is a place I can see returning to in the near future. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you on the next trip.